I had the pleasure of texturing this sword today and I wanted to share the process with you guys. Now, a lot of these materials that I use are pre-built smart materials that I've made for myself and I've put a lot of time into making these. So if you're interested in grabbing them, check out my Grumbird store or my Patreon where you can get them all. The first thing I do is I take one of my stylized smart materials that I have pre-made and apply it to my piece. From there, I create a black mask and select the part that I want to work on. In this part here, you can see me tweaking the blur and the curvature settings to make the edges of the material pop. Once I have that hilt quickly dialed in, it's time to start tackling the blade. For the coloring of the blade, I use the stylized lighting filter. I had no real plan going into this of what I wanted the color to look like. Since there was no real concept art, I really just went with what felt right to me. I eventually, as you'll see, ended up with this really cool orange gradient. Now, with the baked lighting filter, you can do a lot of cool stuff with it, like set the ground color and then you can set the top color so you can get like this really cool natural gradient with it as well. So this is the part where you see I start experimenting a little bit with the blade and I take some time to get the color just right. I actually really liked the orange and blue or the red and blue right there, but I am always a sucker for orange gradients. Now, creating this was a bit of an iterative process. Instead of finalizing one part and then moving on to the next, since I had a lot of colors and a lot of gradients, I decided to bounce back and forth a lot. So you can see once the orange is done, then I can go back and try and figure out how I can contrast it with the actual hilts. And I end up, and I end up with this uh, almost like a bluish gray kind of color. And for the handle, I just simply used 3D Extrude's stylized smart material. It's one of my favorite materials. If you guys are interested in grabbing it yourself, I'll leave a link in the description for it. Now, since the low poly model didn't have the um, polygons for the material of the handle actually modeled into it, I had to paint it on myself like you'll see just like this. Now, I used 3D Extrude's material again to use this. Um, I just took a red tint and then tweaked it the way I wanted it. Now, if you have a good idea of how actual smart materials work themselves, you don't necessarily just need to copy and paste, put them on and leave it. Um, most of the time, all these base and smart materials that I use are often just placed in there just to get the initial color that I want, but then I end up tweaking them so they're almost completely different. And you can see an example of what I was just talking about right here. So with stylized cloth, it's nice to have the edges. Um, it's good to have a nice little soft highlighted edge to them. So from here, I'm creating an ad, a little mask that just kind of captures the edges and using the curvature settings to tweak it and get a nice little small soft edge. So you can see right here, I've got a nice tight line and then all I do is just put in a lighter red color and that's it. You've got a nice, easy red smart material for fabric. It's really easy to do, super quick. Now this piece also has a little ornament in it and I didn't want to recreate the wheel or do anything crazy. So I just simply took my time and painted it in myself. Now it's important to note, I didn't create a new layer for this. I actually used the old first layer that I'm using. So keep in mind that I have a gradient applied to it. So I'm going to have this ornament 
be a slightly different color than the actual blade itself since it's technically sitting lower than the blade um, the gradient that's darker at the bottom is going to be affecting this as well so that's something you really need to keep in mind if you want to have more control over your orange shade in this i would recommend making a brand new layer for it From here on out, the bulk of the work is done. So now I'm just dialing in the colors and getting them to look the way I want. Like I said earlier, this was more of an iterative process. So as I create more colors and introduce more, um, more masks to this piece, I sometimes have to go back to say my metal and handle and change it around a little bit as well. Once I'm comfortable with the way it looks, then I export the maps to get ready to create my masterpiece in Marmoset.